So we want to learn of God's way of doing and being right. So where the Holy Spirit led me was to go back to Genesis and um, just look at some of the things that God did. Uh, the universe and everything within it was created and governed with by design by the work of Elohim. And Elohim is three in one. That's the divine plurality. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And if you look at Genesis 1, 2, and 3, you can see all three of them there. Counseling with themselves. And um, in terms of a marriage with children, when you have children, well, in terms of marriage and you do have children, if the child comes to you and asks you a question about what they can do, should not the other person agree with it? In other words, children are very um, smart. And <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> Manipulative? So that's how it is. If you go to the Holy Spirit, if you go to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're going to say the same thing. They're going to defer to one another. So defer to one another. So we want to make sure that um, we get this understanding. They're three in one, but they all will say the same thing, okay? About what has been written in their word. And so with the fall of Adam, everything within him now died in terms spiritually because he died spiritually but he didn't die physically right so he died spiritually and if when you go to you could just take note of this Genesis 5 3 then you see that after that everybody was born in the image and likeness of Adam who was dead so all of us were dead because we, all of us emanated from Adam we were spiritually dead and so we see as I alluded to earlier uh, second Thessalonians 5.23, I believe that's the right place, where it says, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So once again, the people that have not been born again, that have not confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they are animated, they may have high intellect, and um, that's why the Bible says the only one good is God. Good to God is absolute. There are no curves up and down. So when God says we're not good, it just means that we're not good all the time. If we're not learning how to be that new man, we're very selfish people. I shouldn't take that back. We can be very selfish people. But when it comes to, um, if uh, I think it was one of the pastors shared that he only had $50. He went on a um, conference and um, the Lord told him to give his $50 to this person that needed it. And he said, well, Lord, all I got is $50. And God said, that's all I told you to give. <laughs> so, you know, just, that's why I'm saying we're selfish. And where, when we become that new man, and I'm not saying I'm there, to become that new man, we want to get ourselves off of our mind. It's just like um, when the Holy Spirit falls and you're ministering, the moment you get out of yourself, then you don't care how the people are looking. <laughs> Just let you talk, you know. So we want to get to the place where we get out of ourselves. And that's a process. So you were created in, in with the born again experience. You were created in uh, Christ Jesus. You were made in his image. And we want to learn of God's goodness, his um, absolute goodness he's good all the time even when we're not getting what we think we should deserve well, not deserve because we know we don't deserve anything but even when we're not getting what we feel we we should have we have to maintain the thought and the knowledge that God is good he's good all the time he's right everything he says and does is right and in Isaiah 46 9 it says remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God and there's none like me. And when he says like, he says we've been made in his image and in his likeness. The like that he's saying here is the one that's equal in quantity, quality. And we have to remember that God created everyone else. I mean, he was not created. He was from the beginning. He was from the jump. So God is unoriginated. You and I were created. We had a beginning. In Jeremiah 32, 17, it says, O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by the great power, 
by thy great power and stretched out thy uh, out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. And in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 it says, for by him, speaking of the word, Jesus is the word, everything was created by the word of God, amen? So we're all things created. God spoke what he wanted and he got what he said. And that's where you and I want to get to the place where and where we are actually in the in terms of the negative, if we speak and it's the negative, we're gonna and we have faith from it and it's coming from our heart, guess what? We gonna have it. So we wanna learn how to speak what God says about us. Learn to speak and to know what God says about us so that we can then um, frame our own reality. So if things, uh, the scripture says, um, he has promised us that we will have tribulations and that's because of lower level devils. It might be because of we're um, disobedient in terms of things that we eat or not exercising, or whatever it is that we might be experiencing. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are contributing to that, but because there are people in the world that will do evil and there are also uh, devils that will take advantage of our ignorance of who we are and what we can do in Christ Jesus. So in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, this is just to remind us, for by him the word Jesus were all things created. How many things? All things that are in the heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Everything is held together by the word of God. Um, I think science thought that with the Big Bang that occurred in the beginning, that things that were blown away would put faster, that they'd go out slower. Yeah. You know, if you have a something bang, it goes slower. Well, actually, it's going out faster. It slow down, it's slower. Yeah, but the Big Bang was when God, in my opinion, the Big Bang was when God said, "Let there be light." That was the bang right there, and things now are expanding. And now the scientific world has something that they call, what kind of universe? Multi-universe? Multiverse. 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 Well, they should then change the meaning of a, what a universe is. If it's uni means one, now they've gone to having multiverse. So we want to have a knowledge and understanding of this. So when people with higher degrees speak this stuff, we know that they're just chopping at the bit, not saying too much of anything. So the power of words we see then in uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, which is a comparison of Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In John 1.1 1, 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is the Word, and he was there in the beginning, in the plurality with the Holy Spirit and with God the Father. Our Lord and God, you deserve to receive honor, glory, and power because you created everything. Everything came into existence and was created because of your will. So everything he designed, he knew what he wanted. If you look at the, um, some of the creatures underneath the sea, I mean, they have lights on them that glitter. Um, if you're from the country, did you, had you guys ever seen lightning bugs? Okay, lightning bugs, I mean, what's that all about? And so, God, I mean, he doesn't duplicate anything. There's nobody on the planet that looks like you or will ever look like you. Um, there's new, not, however, there's nothing new under the sun. If you're doing something, somebody's already done it. Maybe they've been more successful than you, but there's nothing new. And he doesn't, even the stripes on um, zebras are not, the, are not the same. So there's nothing the, the same. You are an individual. Do not try to... Um, compare yourself to someone else. That's just not good because they will have gifts and talents that you don't have. I was watching the people that play tennis and well, Pastor and I were saying we probably couldn't even hold a tennis racket in our hand, which I mean that's really negative, isn't it? But that is true. And these people are just so good and they're in front of all these people showing what their abilities are. And just think of that. You're in front of all these people and you might lose and then you have to keep a smile on your face and so I was just saying 
only a certain personality a person could do this only a certain personality would go to the gym and stretch and go to all these various um, areas where the it's daytime in terms of and their body is is running on a, on nighttime and so you don't want to have a comparative based identity do not compare yourself to other people ever 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 and uh, just find out what your gifts and talents are and when you operate in those you will feel so relieved so released because there is no you like you never has been and never will be even your twin is not like you there's something different about you um, everything exists by the will of God and is held together by his word all created things owe their existence to the will of God he spake and it was done he commanded and it stood fast fast there is no other reason why the universe exists at all than that such was the will of God why did in your study or opinion God created man what was the purpose of man to worship God and what else give glory. to give him glory and also of Jesus okay <laughs> so and also you know he created the earth for it to be inhabited he didn't create there just to be empty so he wanted it to he wanted the kingdom of God to have an um, to be I, I don't know what you call it be here in the earth realm and he wanted us to be ambassadors for him to be his sons and also to um, just to reproduce the kingdom of God in the spiritual realm and bring it here in the earthly realm that's what he wants and he wants children that are obedient not because of any pressure that he's applying but because of the patience he had to, has towards us when we mess up what does he do just give us another chance <laughs> his mercy is new every every morning he loves us and so when you and I do stuff that's not on the up and up or it's not wise he just has patience and once you and I learn some of that patience we can extend that to our children to our husbands to our co-workers to people that are driving crazy on the street we will be patient with them because if people are driving bad that's because they don't know how to drive right my, my, that's my thing and there are a lot of bad drivers that I've run into and it's because I'm making that confession that's probably how I'm running into them all the time <laughs> So whether wisdom, power, goodness is manifested in the universe, it is traced to God and is the expression of what was in him from eternity. It is proper then to look up through nature to nature's God and wherever we see greatness or goodness in the wor works of creation, we know it's a result of God. God is never wrong. You know, people say, well, why did God let this happen? The question is, why did we let it happen? Because we could, some of the things we could do prevent is through prayer just think of it God knows that this 10th cigarette that we smoke is going to cause us cancer what do we want God to do for a hand to come out of cyberspace and knock it off out of our, out of our mouth I mean it, it would be people flipping and flopping all over if God stopped everything he knew that would be harmful to us or to others so what you and I want to do as emissaries, as ambassadors for Christ, is get the word out as much as we can and from the standpoint of as much knowledge as we know. Like I said, smoking cigarettes is not a sin. Smoking cigarettes is unhealthy. This one guy at the prison asked me, was cursing a sin? And I had to ask him, well, cursing, like you curse your child by calling him stupid, or where you use profanity. What, what is the um, detriment of profanity? I'm sorry? Okay, use profanity, you sowing seeds against yourself? Now that would be a sin. Cursing is not a sin. Profanity is not a sin. What is it? You, it limits your vocabulary. You don't have any color on your palate. When you go someplace and people don't curse, you can't even talk. And I say you. I mean the other you. 
you know, you don't have a thing to say or if they have the, the word. <laughs> so, I mean, it just limits what you're saying. And half the time, if they're making up words, they can't converse. So we want a wide range of words on our palate and not just those words. And there's a word that's on television and I'm, they, they write it and they always say Jesus Christ and the F word. I mean, they can't even talk. And I'm telling you, you don't want to be looking at too much television of that ilk because that stuff, faith comes by what? Hearing, 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 hearing. So I still offer my challenge to those of you that like challenges. See if you can turn the television off, what, an hour? Can you do it for an hour? <laughs> and the news, I mean the news, they just make up stuff that's depressing. I mean they'll tell us stuff that's happening in wherever, and you never even heard of the place. And now they're doing, they have young people and they look really good from the surface and they go out to lunch and they're fussing with one another, cursing each other out. Why would you go to that place with friends like that? So evidently they are toning down, not toning down, they're making people receive more stuff that I call stupid. And like I say, some of the stuff I look at. But you want to get to the place where you look at something that will edify, exhort, and comfort you so that you can edify, exhort, and comfort others. Now these are all suggestions. These are not thou shalt do. Okay? Um, God wants you to know that who will get an incorruptible body at, at the end when he comes back? Who's going to get an incorruptible body? That's a body that cannot be destroyed. Huh? Those that it's not a choice. Everybody's going to get an incorruptible body. The saved and the unsaved. That's why the unsaved person that gets an incorruptible body that will not, can't be burned up, can't rest, um, there's no stability in um, hell. It's like that feeling one gets if you've ever been to Five Flags or something and you get on a ride and you go down like an elevator and you know it comes up in your stomach. Well that's how um, the dark side is. There's no stability. You're forever falling. And if you are partying at all, you'll be with something that you can't see because I believe it's really dark according to the Bible. What does it say? Gross darkness. So you'll be having smells in this incorruptible body that cannot be corrupted. So everyone is going to get an incorruptible body. Our body will be such that we can go from if there are multi-universes, we'll be able to go from one universe to the other. We'll be able to slide through the wormhole that they say exists. We will be incorruptible. You can use your imagination. What is it and where is it you want to go? And how fast would you have to go to get there? Godspeed, amen. <laughs> so this is just something so that you'll know that we can operate in faith. Number one is through our study and in comparing various scriptures. So nothing is independent and separate from having been created by Elohim the Lord. What you need or what do you know? And I said God's telephone number is Jeremiah 33.3. And for those of us that are probably over 50, do you remember when telephone numbers were like Parkway 5679222? It had numbers. So this... <laughs> So now you can remember Jeremiah 33, 3, call on me and I will answer you. I'll tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own. So if you need a witty invention because you need some money, then you need to call on him. Father, give me some, a witty invention, something that would help mankind, not just to make money. We went someplace and I think to eat and I think they only made the food was to feed us, right? Because it wasn't very good. I mean, it was really not good. Isaiah 46, 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none other. I am God and there is none like me. God is unoriginated. This is a repeat. Jeremiah 32, 17. O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out 
arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. Also for those of you that have yet to really study the Bible, you want to get several um, different versions of the Bible so that you can understand it. Because King James for me, I started off on King James and I'm just partial to it, but I do have other Bibles that I can go to. And also the commentaries, I want to alert you, you have to be careful of those too because sometimes they come from a denominational standpoint. So just because professor, whatever, whatever said it, you want to make sure that you confirm it with how many witnesses? At least two, and a third if you can find it. So the new creature walks by faith and not by sight. And we understand how the worlds were that came into existence. God spoke it into existence. How did he create it? And this is... Um, an understanding of faith. It says, uh, this is Hebrews 11.3, through faith we understand that the world's S were framed by the Word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we've been made in the image and likeness of God. We can frame our life by the words that we speak. And what we want to speak is what God has already said about us, which means then we have to um, know God and know His Son and know that part of the word that we want to uh, have reproduced in our lives. And we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, this is called the um, seed principle, Genesis. Genesis 1 11, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. We see then that the scripture says, And the seed was after his kind. Why do you think it was his kind? The seed. His kind. Who has the seed? The man or the woman? The female or the male? The man. And so the seed principle, the word tells us that the word of God is the seed and it is to be planted in earth within us. We are, the physicality of us is, the, um, is from the earth. So when words are seeds, we're, that even words that we speak, we're planting it in our hearts. So make sure that, or not alert, be alert to the fact that you only want planted in your heart that which you want to see a crop from. 30, 60, 100 fold.